Hi, Salvatore. How are you? Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm fine. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks for coming to class. Um, were you able to join the class Good earlier? Job. I think we were having a little bit of trouble. No, I, I don't know. Uh, start uh, class. Uh, uh, class started uh, later, teacher. I don't know why. Okay. Well, I started it um, at right at four o'clock at my time, ten minutes ago. But no, no students came, so I started it again. <laughs> I think maybe. Okay. I don't know. No I'm problem. not sure what happened. <laughs> uh, but do you like photography, Salvatore? Yes, I like it. I like it. Uh, I like photography, teacher. Okay, awesome. Are you from Italy? Italy, yes. Okay, what part of Italy are you from? Uh, Milan. Okay, in the north. Nice. How is the weather? Is yes. it cold there? Today it was a sunny day, and in the afternoon uh, there was 12, 13 degrees. Okay, okay. And now in the evening, in the evening the temperature uh, is uh, 5 degrees. Okay. All right, great. Well, it's nice that it's not too cold there. That's good. Um, I'm from Florida in the uh, United States. I, I know, I know, teacher. Sorry, uh, because I wanted to say you that this is my first uh, class with you, but uh, yeah. uh, you don't remember. You don't remember me. <laughs> I don't. I know. No problem. <laughs> okay. Did you have another class before? Yes, with me? I. I yes, remember really. your name, but I don't remember your picture. Did you change your picture? I changed picture, yes. Oh, that's why. Yes, I recognize the students by their picture all the time. That's why. I know, I know, I know, teacher, no problem. Oh, <laughs> well, it's nice to see you again. I'm glad that you're with us today. So um, I think because we had problems starting the class, um, I think maybe you are the only student. So we can talk a little bit about photography today. Um, do you do photography in Italy? Uh, yes, I use uh, my uh, photograph, photograph machine. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, we call it a camera. Camera, yes, sorry. I no, use camera, okay. mm -hmm. uh, especially when uh, uh, when I go to holiday, I use camera. Uh huh. Yeah. Or if you're speaking with English people, you say, "When I go on vacation." On vacation. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. Say, I love to take pictures when I go on vacation. Nice job. So, what are some of your favorite places that you have gone on vacation? Hmm. Let me think. Uh, I like uh, to go in a country uh, where uh, you can see uh, the mon monument, uh, architecture, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, line, line, landscape. landscape yeah. yeah. Okay. That's cool. Um, have you visited okay. many places in Europe? Yes, in Europe, uh, yes. Uh, last uh, trip that uh, I made, uh, last uh, month I went to Scotland. Whoa, and, uh, cool. Yes, very cool. And uh, <laughs> I visited, cool. uh, I visited uh, uh, some castle in uh, Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I visited uh, a castle near, near Aberdeen where uh, uh, there is uh, this castle that uh, uh, it is in uh, uh, it, it is in a big I don't know how to say in a big rock. Uh, oh wow! It's in it's near, like carved into the rock. Yes. Uh, wow. Near, uh, near the sea. That's really cool. Yes. Wow. Um, I've never been to Scotland, so that would be awesome to see. 
Um, and maybe here I could search for a picture of that castle. Do you remember what the castle was called? Yes. Uh, I write in the chat. I don't know if I write uh, uh, correct. Donut Castle, Stonehaven, the Stonehaven. Okay, I think I found it. Hold on just a second. I will share my screen with you so that you can see the picture. Yes. Is this it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very wow. Beautiful. Yeah, that looks like a really beautiful place. So were you able to go inside of the castle? Yes, I went inside the castle and uh, I made uh, a lot of pictures. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. That looks so beautiful. That's such an, an amazing landscape there with the cliff. This is called a cliff. And, cliff. Okay. Uh -huh, and the sea. Wow. That's beautiful. And um, sometimes we can say, instead of saying make a picture, we could say, I, uh, you say you take a picture. So you could say, I took a lot of pictures. I took a lot of pictures. Okay. Yeah, great job. <laughs> can, I say, can I say one thing? Yeah. Uh, when I went to Scotland, I tried to speak English with Scottish. But uh, oh. it was it was difficult to understand. They uh, have a very hard accent there. Really, it's very yeah. strong. Yes. I continued to say, uh, uh, "Can you repeat, please? Can you repeat, please?" <laughs> I don't understand. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I can show you. This is actually where I live um, because I'm from Florida. I'll show you actually yeah. a picture of Florida first, in the United States. Um, so in Florida, this is uh, where Florida is in the southern United States. Okay. Um, but um, maybe I can show you some of the cool animals that we have in Florida. They have alligators, and these are called manatees. Have you seen a manatee before? Manatees? What is it? Manatees? Manatees? Uh huh. A manatee. This is. It's a kind of, it's a very large animal that lives in the water, uh, and it I, eats grass. I haven't, I have never seen this teacher. Yes, they live in Florida, okay. in the United States, and they're very, very peaceful, and they're mm -hmm. very slow, <laughs> and they just eat the vegetation, the, the seagrass, the vegetation at the bottom. Yes. Uh, They're very cool. His face uh, look uh, quiet, right? Yes, quiet. they're peaceful. Yes. Yeah. So these are some other animals they have. We have dolphins, uh, horses. They have these large turtles called a tortoise. There are also sea turtles, a lot of fish, alligators. They mm -hmm. have a lot of animals. So that's where I'm from in Florida. Uh, this is a person swimming with a manatee. So they're very large. Oh. Um, but now I live in the Dominican Republic. Have you heard of yes. the Dominican Republic? Uh, yes, I remember that uh, uh, you said this me, uh, uh -huh. but uh, I have never been in the U.S. and the Dominican Republic. Okay, well maybe you can visit um, in the future because it's a beautiful place. Um, I'll show you maybe a picture of um, Bayaibe, which is a really nice town. It's a very small town, and um, the water there is just beautiful. I'm not sure. It's like crystal clear, the water. And um, they have a lot of starfish, like stele marine, starfish. Ah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Starfish. 
Okay. Starfish. And they're um, in the center of the country. There are also um, um, so, and there are like a lot of waterfalls like this in the center of the country. And do you live here? Do Do you live there, teacher? In this yes, place? I I live here now. Yes, because I'm a volunteer. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, it's a great place to to live. I like it a lot. The people are very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so maybe we could read a little bit about photography since you like um, since you like to travel. Um, maybe we could read the first page here. This has some photography tips. I will give you also the link if you would like to open it. Mm -hmm. um, this is the link to the article. Okay. Okay, so maybe you could read about uh, the tea plantation in Malaysia. Maybe we can read the tips here. Can you read this on the bottom? Yes. Uh, can, uh, um, uh, is can it too small? Yes. Okay, hold on. Um, is it still too small, Ancora? Uh, is that better? Bit. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that it's small. No, no problem. No problem. It's okay, teacher. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> okay, but yeah, if you like, you can read this here. Tia uh, Plantion Malaysia. 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 Mm -hmm. Nature and land landscapes are a favorite photographic subject evoking memories of travel and senses experienced in a particular place and at a particular moment. But nature photography can be challenging. In this gallery, get expert tips and learn what you should consider when photographing the natural world. Again, teacher? Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Okay. Here, a farmer at a tea plant plantation in a Cameroon plantation mm -hmm. in Cameroon Highlands, Malaysia, uses an umbrella to keep himself dry while riding his bike. Nice job. And there's a photo tip here on the bottom. Can you read that tip for us? Photo tip. Learn to appreciate overcast days. The diffused light can make for increased color saturation in your images. Great job. Very good. And these two words here that have an ED ending diffused and increased. These both have a silent E here. So instead of saying increased or diffused, we would just say diffused and increased. Can you say diffused. those words for me? Yes, teacher. Diffused, increased. Very good. Nice job. So here in the chat box, I'll write, unless a word ends with a D or a T, um, that the ED, oh, I'll, I'll try to write it here for you, the ED, um, the E is always silent. Mm -hmm. Silent. But um, I'll, I'll write the whole sentence here. Okay, so for example, um, arrested, the word arrest ends with the letter T. So when you add the ED, then you would pronounce, you would pronounce it like arrested, arrested. Um, but the words here like um, diffuse, Diffuse does not end with a T or a D. Um, so when we add the ED to the end, 
diffused, um, then you don't have to say the extra syllable at the end, but it's just like diffused. Does that make sense? Okay. When uh, uh, when uh, uh, the word finish uh, ed, uh, I don't know pronunciation e diffused. Mm -hmm. When uh, word finish with uh, uh, t, I have to pronunciation arrested, for example. Okay, Arrested. yeah, right. very good. And the word diffuse ends with an e, so that's why we don't we don't pronounce um, we don't pronounce it like diffused, but we just say diffused. But if the word ends with the letter d or the letter t, then um, then we would have to pronounce that extra syllable at the end. And I wanted to say hi also to Andre. Hi, Andre. Hi again, Michelle. Hey, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> uh, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So we were just, we got a little bit off subject, um, but I just wanted to show Salvatore a quick example of these ED endings. Um, okay, so Salvatore, I'll, I'll give you this link also that it explains a little bit about how to pronounce those ED endings. Um, okay. It has that rule there with the T and the D. Um, so here you can see that like the word work, it ends with a K. So we add the ED um, to make it a past tense word, okay? Um, so since it ends with a K, should we pronounce that E or is the E silent? E silent. What Worked. do you think? Yeah, it's, yeah, aha, exactly, very good, worked, great job. Okay, what yeah. about this one, paint, paint ends with a T, so would the E be silent or would you have to pronounce it? Mm, no, I don't pronounce E, right, paint, oh. painted, no, painted. Painted, no. yeah, painted. painted, very good, and it's because it ends with a T. Just like you can see here, um, like with a T or a D. I'll show you here. Like um, want, how would you say this? Uh, uh, wanted. Very good. What about end? Handed. Excellent. Great job. Very good. All right, so whenever it's a T or a D, then you always add that extra syllable. What about this one, though? Hope. It ends with an E. So how could you say Hope. this? Hoped. Hope. Very good. Hope. What about laugh? Laughed. Yeah, exactly. You got it. So this one is faxed, washed, watched, liked, played, allowed, begged. So, um, so it's only when it ends with a T or a D, then you add that extra syllable. So, so the, yeah, that's just a little, uh, a little reminder. But yeah, you did excellent though reading in English. You did really well, Salvatore. It's nice difficult job. to remember. It's difficult to remember. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a little bit hard, but just keep practicing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, teacher. No, good job. And so the tip here for this picture, the photo tip, was to um, take pictures when it's overcast. Do you guys know this word, overcast? Andre, have you heard that word before? When there are clouds and there is no sun, right? Exactly, yeah. So overcast is another word for cloudy. So why would a cloudy day be better to take pictures? Uh, he says that uh, it makes uh, colors saturated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saturated. what does that mean? That the colors are saturated. It increases color saturation. Uh, as I understand it, uh, the colors are more uh, intense, maybe. Exactly, yeah. You have great reading comprehension, Andre. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like, let's look at the next picture here. Oh, Andre, did you get the link? I'll give you the link. Yeah, I opened it, yes. Oh, OK, uh, OK. So let's look at the next picture. You guys can see it. And these are just amazing, beautiful pictures. I always loved the National Geographic pictures. So this is a beautiful picture of the beach. 
And I'm going to ask Andre. Andre, maybe you can read um, the little um, the little paragraph here, the little photo tip, and what yeah, it says. Um, <laughs> twilight, twilight fall, pulse on the wind, etched sand dunes on Nosset Beach, Massachusetts. Nosset, or how do you, how do you pronounce it? I think it's Nosset. Yeah, Nosset. I've never been there. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Photo tip: uh, Use texture texture to communicate your personal impressions of the scene, uh, raking angles of early or late sun usually reveals texture best. Very good, nice job. So, um, do you understand this, what it says, wind etched? Do you know what etched means? Uh, yes, I guess uh, when there is, uh, we, we can see uh, sharp edges of something, right? Or yeah, uh, very good. So when something is etched, um, for example, when people die, you know they have a tombstone, the stone that goes above their grave. And um, when people write in the stone, um, they say that they etch it in stone. So uh, yeah, it's like um, when you carve something in stone. Okay. And so this says that the sand dunes are etched, like they're yeah. carved by the wind. Mm -hmm. So Sorry, it's, uh, it's a metaphor, kind of, kind of metaphor. Yeah, right? yeah, uh huh. Okay. It's a way of, um, it's a form of descriptive language. <laughs> mm -hmm. The wind etched. Okay, so um, what's the tip here? What does it say that we can we can look for when we take pictures? Uh, I think he and, and he recommends to um, use the texture of the of the scene uh, mm -hmm. to communicate your impression. But uh, I don't understand what does the raking what what does it raking angles mean? Okay. Uh, well, it says raking angles of early or late sun. So the sun is not coming straight down from the sky, but it's coming. the The sunlight comes in at an angle, oh. at a low angle. So, um, for yeah. example, you can see in the picture, um, if the light was coming straight down onto the beach, you wouldn't mm -hmm. see all of Should the texture see. here in the sand. But because the, the light is coming from the side, it's coming from that angle, um, you can see all of like the, the curves and the grooves in the sand. Yeah, because I think, I think uh, it is because of shadows. Uh, yes. Because of the low, low angles, light angles of the, of the sun. Uh-huh. Uh, so it kind of, uh, how do you call it, <laughs> uh, to do shadow. How do you call it? Yeah, uh, it creates shadows. It creates shadow, yeah. But yeah. I know that there, is, there is another word for that. It's um, Okay, I forgot it. It casts a shadow, maybe? Maybe, ca uh, yeah, casts. Yeah. Casts a shadow? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah, great job. That's a good phrase to remember, too. So the first one was to um, try to take advantage of cloudy days or overcast days. And the second one here, it says that we could also take advantage of early or late sun. So maybe the sunrise or the sunset to try to get some good texture in the pictures. And um, sunrise and sunset are also really good times to take photos of people because the light isn't as harsh but um, it's a little bit of like a golden light when it's in the morning or in the evening. So, um, so people, it makes the people look better. <laughs> that kind but of light. It's important to avoid uh, sun shining to your uh, camera. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's true. Sometimes if the light is too harsh, then the people can can look unattractive. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so let's read about this next picture from the Falcon Islands. Um, maybe Salvatore, would you like to read this one for us? Yes, teacher. Uh, where is uh, sorry? Where is uh, uh, 
Uh, albatross. Uh, this is this kind of bird, an albatross. They're very, very large. Ah, okay. Yeah, this uh, picture, uh, actually, it looks like it's not even real because... I guess it must be real. Um, but it looks like it's it's fake because it's so perfect. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm sorry. You can go ahead and read. <laughs> sorry. Albat no, no problem, teacher. Uh, Albatross Fol Falkland Falcons. Highlands. Mm -hmm. Falkland Highlands. A black browed albatross and its mate work together to forage and nest in the Falkland Highlands. Photo tip, when, fo when photographing birds, try for a natural background without man-made objects such as utility poles, wires, fences and buildings which compete for attention. Great reading, very good. And I wanted to practice the pronunciation of this word, photographing, photographing. And so let's try to say it, yeah, very good, with the syllable stress on that first syllable, photographing. Great job. Photographing. Yeah. So Salvatore, what is the tip here for doing um, nice photographs of birds? Uh, the tip is uh, that uh, you uh, uh, you should uh, try uh, a natural background and uh, without uh, man-made man object. Perfect, very good. Um, and that way you can really focus on the bird and you won't be distracted maybe by a building or a boat or something else that's there. So, great job. All right, so let's continue. Let's read another tip here. This is a beautiful forest picture. Um, and I think it's Andre's turn. Andre, would you like to read this for us? Yeah. Uh, fall trees, Utah. Uh, leaves turn golden during autumn or in southern Utah. Uh, photo tip. Uh, with a good uh, tripod, you can... Uh, you can be set up and ready when the lighting is right, but don't be afraid to handhold and, and at slow shutter speeds the serendipity mm -hmm. uh, effects can be wonderful. Okay, very good. Is this an unfamiliar vocabulary word for you? Serendipitous? Serendipitous. Uh, I think I saw this this word before, but I maybe beautiful. Oh. Mhm. Mm um, no, it doesn't mean beautiful. It means um, I'll give you the exact definition: um, occurring or discovered by chance in a happy or beneficial way. So something that just happens unexpectedly. They would ah, say is okay. serendipity. Yeah. Like chance, accidental, or coincidental are some synonyms. So it's saying if you don't control everything, like with a tripod, but if you hold it with your hand, um, when you have slow shutter speeds, sometimes um, the, the picture comes out in an unexpected way, but sometimes it's, it's also like wonderful, the unexpected effects. But I so guess if you, if you can't hold... Picture. If you hand hold uh, with the slower shutter uh, speeds, you you can get a very blurry photos. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, that's that's one possible outcome. It can be blurry. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, it's worth a try, though, especially if you have a digital camera, because you can easily take more pictures and you can look at it right away to see the effects mm -hmm. of of hand holding it instead of using a tripod. But if you're using film, um, you might want to limit how much you you hold <laughs> the camera yeah. with your hands when the, when the shutter speed is really slow because you might waste a whole roll of film and have just all blurry pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, you asked, Andre, if I liked photography. I really do. I used to... Um, 
I used to take a lot of pictures. Um, it was before digital cameras were really popular. Um, but I, I really enjoyed taking film pictures with black and white and also with color. Um, but I haven't really done it too much lately. I've been very busy. But do you enjoy ph um, photography also? I, uh, I used to take photos, but uh, I don't have uh, good cameras, for example, like uh, DSLRs or something like that, but uh, just a regular digital cameras, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't, uh, I don't think that I'm a good photographer, because my photos are not so great. Okay. Well, yeah, sometimes it really depends on the camera that you're using, especially with digital cameras, because if the resolution isn't very good, then even if you are an amazing photographer, then the results will still just be mediocre. They'll just be average. But, uh, but I like uh, black yeah. and white photography. It's, okay. It, it gives a great effect, I guess, actually. Yeah, I love the contrast, too. Mm -hmm. um, especially like we saw with the other picture of um, the texture in the sands, like there was a lot of contrast in that picture, so it's it really catches your eye. It's cool. Okay, and I wanted to welcome also Monica to the class. Hi, Monica. Hi. 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 Welcome. Sorry for to being class. late. <laughs> it's okay. No, we had actually some problems starting the class earlier. Um, I'm not sure what happened, but when I started it, the others, the students couldn't join, <laughs> so I had okay. to start it twice. Yeah. So okay. it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're talking about photography today. Is it something that you're interested in? Um, yes, um, but uh, I usually take photos uh, when I go on vacation. No, okay. I'm not a uh, professionist. <laughs> Okay, no, I don't think any of us are professional yeah. photographers. <laughs> but it's still, it's fascinating and it's so cool if you can um, take a photograph like this, like that, it just like yes. catches your eye and you're like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where are you from, Monica? I don't think I've met it, you before. No, I'm from Italy. Oh, cool. What part of Italy? In the north of Italy, near Venice. Okay, that's awesome. Um, we have Salvatore with us too, and he's uh, he lives near M Milan, Milano. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ciao, that's Salvatore. awesome. Ciao, Ciao, Monica. <laughs> uh, okay, and we have um, another student also, Monica, with us, and he's from Russia. His name is Andre. Okay. Hi, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Monica. All right, so happy that you were able to join us, Monica. Monica, maybe you could read um, the caption for this picture and the photo tip that goes along with it here. Yes, uh, Svalbard, Norway. The Harsom Fjord is viewed through glacier. I don't know how to pronounce. Glacier, <laughs> glacier. Glacier, ice in Svalbard, Norway's Arctic archipelago. I don't know this Archipelago. one either. Archipelago. Archipelago. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> photo tip. When you decide what makes you want to phot photograph a place, think of adjectives to describe it and include a detail in your photograph that conveys that adjective. Okay, nice job. So, um, so the next time that you want to take a picture, um, what can you do before you take, uh, bef before you maybe you line up the picture? Uh, what can you think of before you take it? Okay, they suggest to think uh, of an adjective that you will use uh, would use to describe um, okay. the thing you are, you are um, photographing. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, um, w like, can you think of an example? Like, how would you use that in real life? Hmm. Like, maybe uh, if you're taking, maybe if you're photographing a wedding, maybe if you're the photographer at a wedding, um, perhaps yeah. you could think of like you see the couple together and you think maybe adjectives like sweet or um, romantic and and like as you're looking at them through the lens you wait for the moment that would 
convey that idea. Yeah. I think that's kind yeah, of what it means. To grab, uh, to grab the right moment. Yeah. 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 Um, have you been to Norway before? I know it's a bit far from uh, Italy. Actually, yeah, uh, I've been uh, to Oslo last summer. Yes. Okay, the because you had Norway. Yeah, you had good pronunciation of these words here. Um, like, <laughs> I still can't pronounce this very well. Fjord, fjord. Fjord. Is that yeah. fjord? Yeah. So you pronounce it like you're from Norway. <laughs> You have good pronunciation <laughs> of those of the Norwegian words. I'm I'm terrible at pronouncing, like the names of the places in Norway. They're very hard for me to pronounce, because I'm it American. It is very similar to the Italian word because okay. we say fiordo. It is oh, very fiordo. Similar. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's easier for you guys. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so nice job with that reading. Let's look at the next picture here. Um, I think Salvatore, maybe it's your turn. Maybe you could tell us about this picture of the deer. Deer black is national forest. A deer is captured. Sorry, a deer is captured at captured? sunset. Captured. Very good. Captured. Yeah, at uh -huh. sunset in Black Hills National Forest. Phototype game animals blend into the landscape, so be careful about your background. Wait to shoot a deer, for example, until it is out, outlined against by sky or a distant light colored field. Great reading, very good. And uh, this word outline ends with an E. Um, so how could you pronounce this word? What do you think? Outlined. Very good, perfect, yay! <laughs> um, so um, I know it's really hard to remember those ED words, but you did a great job there. Very, very good. So, um, so what should we do? Oh, <laughs> no, you're doing awesome. Um, so when when you're taking a picture of an animal that blends into the background, that's the same color as the grass, maybe. What could you do to make it stand out? Uh, yes, uh, you don't uh, uh, you don't make uh, uh, you don't make noise because uh, animal can uh, can be can uh, uh, sorry can. Uh, you can get scared away, maybe. Can scare it, can scare it, and uh, run, run away, and uh, you can't uh, take the photo, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's really important when you're photographing wildlife. Very good. And something else that it mentioned is to um, try to take the picture against a different color. So if uh, maybe against the sky or here, how it's against this this backlighting so that the animal will stand out too because they, they have this natural camouflage so they blend in with the grass so sometimes they're hard to see <laughs> but nice job, very good Salvatore and Andre, I think it's your turn for the next one this is another beautiful picture here the lake yeah. uh uh, a lake in Ontario, Canada is captured at dawn. At dawn. Uh, follow, follow tip. Uh, get out early. Not only is the early morning light usually good, but uh, you'll avoid the crowds that gather uh, later at popular places. Very nice. Awesome. So we talked a little bit about this already, about the early morning light, mm -hmm. like sunrise yeah. or sunset. And it can really give a different feeling to the picture. Um, yeah, the light here is just beautiful. And it, like there's a little bit of fog on the lake, and there are some geese or swans. I'm not sure what kind of animals those are. Maybe they're in Russia, swans. In, in Russia, sometimes you, you can see some fishermen sitting on this. Uh, oh, that would <laughs> make an awesome wooden picture. Wooden yeah, these are, this is called a dock. On docks, yeah, maybe docks, on the yeah. on the on the beach as well, because oh. you know, fishermen are sitting everywhere. Yeah, um, early in the morning is a great time to go fishing too. Yeah, 
<laughs> Very nice. Great job. Um, okay, so we have just a few more pictures. I think there are just a couple of more. Um, this is in Italy, so maybe we could ask Monica to read this one for us. Okay. Dolomites, Italy. Italy's Dolomites are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Phototip, the bright white of snow falls matters. To avoid underexposing, take a reading from your subject, a grey card or something else of uh, equal tonal value. Okay, very nice. So, um, do you know what this means, underexposing? Uh, I think it it is um, it happens when there is a much uh, much more light. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think because uh, of the snow. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Um, so. The exposure is how um, how long the shutter stays open. So um, when the snow is bright white, then sometimes the meter in your camera, if it's automatic, it will think that there's too much light in the picture, and then it will um, it will only stay open for a, s a short amount of time, and the picture will come out too dark. So that's what it means to be underexposed. Um, and to be overexposed, it's when there's too much light. Okay. So under and yep. overexposed. Yeah. Yeah, but it was <laughs> the same idea. It's because the snow is white, so it, it comes out very bright. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. Actually, it's, it's a very popular technique to use your uh, ex expometer, or how do you call this device that... Uh, or might, might be uh, the camera itself. The exposure? On, on, uh -huh. On on a gray card, so you can, for example, get a neutral exposition. So you you don't have too many light, too too, too much light or too dark places, for example. Yeah, I've heard yeah, about that. I've I've never um, done it myself, so that's actually a new tip for me. I'd like to try it. Have you tried it before, Andre? Or have no, you I didn't. But uh, I, I guess every professional use uses this technique. Yeah. Okay. All right, so maybe we can learn from the professionals there. Maybe we can try it <laughs> in the future. Um, and ha Monica, have you visited this place? Is this um, in the Italian Alps? Uh, yes, uh, yes, they are in the north of Italy. And uh, yes, sometimes I, I go trekking. I like to go trekking, not so high, <laughs> but uh, yes, I've been there. Okay, yeah, you could also use the word hiking, hiking. Yes, hiking, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. I would love to visit this place. It looks beautiful. Uh, Salvatore, have you visited there? I know that you're kind of close by in Milan. Yes, I visited Dolomiti. And wow. uh, when uh, I went to Dolomiti, I like to go, I don't know how to say in English, uh, uh, the house uh, in the mountain. Uh, oh, a cabin. Where, Cabin, where mm -hmm. you can find, when you can eat uh, and drink uh, good wine in a high, uh, high mountain. Very beautiful teacher. I like this. Yeah, that's. It looks like such an amazing place. You guys are very, very lucky to be able to go there. It's really cool. Um, Angie, are there places like this also in Russia? I know that there. Like it's very cold. I know there's a lot of snow. Uh, yes, I guess, especially in Siberia, there is a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. And do they have mountains like this also? Um, maybe in some in some regions, uh, yes, there are mountains. For example, do you know Sochi, uh, where there was uh, Olympic Games? Oh, yeah, uh -huh, the Winter Olympics. Th there are some mountains and uh, as well as the snow there. So. Yeah, that makes sense. They couldn't have the Winter Olympics without mountains. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go on. Let's look at the next example. And these are some cute little praying mantis. It's a kind of insect here. And um, let's see whose turn it is. I think, Salvatore, it's your turn if you'd like to read this one. Uh, Tisle. Mantis 
Израил. Чут изле ментис нимс ар каптред ап клоз ет регион лейк ин Израил. Фототип. Вен фотографинг wild life use wild life uh, sorry wild wild life mm -hmm. use a shallow depth of field for close ups to blur out background distractions nice job very good very nice so when you're taking a picture of something close up what can you do to the background mm. Uh, you can use uh, you can use uh, a shallow depth of field for close ups to blur out background distractions. Very good. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So, do you know this um are you familiar with this word to blur? Blur something? No, but uh, I know that there is a rock band, uh, the name Blur, <laughs> right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> I remember them. <laughs> they I sang that song, woohoo! <laughs> um, yeah, so it Blur, it's like, um, in Italian you would be, you would say like, per farlo mosso, qualcosa. So like, <laughs> right? Mosso? Mosso. Mosso. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that the background here, it's very blurry. Like, you can't see anything clearly. So, um, so you can try to blur the background and just focus on, um, on the things that you're taking the picture of close up, and that makes them really stand out a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. great job, Salvatore. All right, so I love the next picture, too, that has a lot of lavender. Um, maybe we could ask, um, or no, that's not lavender. It just looks like lavender. Uh, we can have Andre read this one for us. Okay, uh, a field of uh, pentstemons. I'm not sure how to pronounce pentstemons? it. I guess it's a, it's this kind of flower. Yeah, it's the name of that okay. flower. Okay. A field of pentstemons uh, surround uh, burned out tree trunks in Tahoe National Forest, Nevada. Uh, be sure to watch your st step when photographing wildflowers. Some of your subjects may be endangered species. Uh, never uh, uproot or cut wildflowers and be careful not to trample the plants. Okay, very nice. So you should take care of the plants or the flowers that you're trying to photograph. You don't want to squish them all. While you're, advice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> while you're walking through. Um, so yeah, uh, that way you can preserve the beautiful flowers for the next person that comes along too. Great job. Very good. Okay, let's continue. We just have a couple of minutes left, so maybe we can read all of these before the end. I love this picture too. It has so much texture. Um, I think it's Monica's turn. Monica, would you like to read this one? Okay. Seed pods, seed pods are captured in closed up. Photo tip: When photographing details, try different angles, above, below, from the side, to find the most interesting composition. Okay, great. Um, so, what's the what's the tip here? How could you take a great picture like this? Uh, so to take a picture from different side. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Different angles above, below, so all around uh, the thing you are photographing. Great, very, very good. I like how you were able to use that phrase. Also, different angles. Great job. <laughs> all right, let's Thanks. let's go and let's try the next one. Uh, Salvatore, can you read this one for us? Wow, this one's beautiful too. Uh, salt, salt, flat Bolivia. On the Esther margin of Salar de Juni in Bolivia, expedition cars attempt to cross the flats after flooding from heavy March rains. Phototip, don't matter the sky, it's usually bright and will cause you to under, under 
expose the rest of the scene. Aha, the scene. Very good. Um, so do you guys remember what this word means, under expose? Mm, no, I don't remember, sorry. Okay, it's, a, it's okay. Much weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good. So um, Andre said not too much light or if there no, is not no, enough yeah. light. So this says if you try to um, try to decide how long to keep your shutter open based on the sky, it's too bright and then your, your picture will come out too dark. Um, so you guys have probably seen that if you have taken pictures before of a sunset. And so you can see the beautiful colors of the sunset, but then all of the, the ground in front is black, like you can't see anything because it's too dark. So if you, um, if you meter by, by the ground instead of by the sky, then you'll be able to see um, the, whole, the whole scene. Yeah, great job, very good. Okay, so we have one more, I think, if you guys... Can, oh no, there are more than one more. Okay, <laughs> let's just read one more. Um, this is another beautiful scene with some great light, um, and I think it's Andre's turn. Maybe you could read the tips here. Yeah, uh, sunset um, illuminates poppies in field near a highway. Photo tip: uh, Take advantage of sunsets when photographing wildflowers. The soft golden light will make a meadow of wildflowers glow. Perfect, nice job. So when would be maybe one of the best times to take a picture of wildflowers like this? It's the same as the sunset. sunset. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys, I don't think we have time to, to read the rest of these tips, but um, I wanted to ask you guys, what is your favorite photograph that you have ever taken? So um, I actually took a photograph of lightning when I was a teenager in Florida. There's a lot of lightning there, and um, it didn't come out as amazing as this picture, <laughs> obviously. Uh -huh. But um, I took it on a film camera um, at night on a bridge in a rainstorm. <laughs> I was standing there with my camera, and, um, and I took a whole roll of, of pictures, and only two came out with lightning, but um, but the whole sky was illuminated and it looked almost purple. And then you could see the lightning rays coming down. But um, Andre, maybe you could tell us what is your favorite picture that you have ever taken? Uh, I like to make a, take a photos of snowflakes on the glass of the window, you know. It's kind of... Oh. Uh, when there are many snowflakes and it kind of uh, looks cool, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you take them really close up so that you can yes. see the design? Yes, I used. Uh, you know, I used uh, mic macro 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 uh -huh. shooting. Uh, yeah, and you kind of uh, fo fo make a focus on the snowflakes, and all that behind your window is blurred, so it's kind of looks cool, I guess. That's really awesome. Yeah. Okay, um, Monica, what about you? What's your favorite photograph that you've ever taken? Um, I don't know, maybe I was uh, thinking of a photo that I take, I've taken in, uh, in France of a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, actually, it, it, was, uh, it was a little blur, but the light uh, came out uh, with a strange effect that I, I like it. <laughs> even if it, uh, it wasn't uh, perfect. Yeah, some of the best pictures are like that. Like, they're not yeah. exactly perfect, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Somewhat, um, yeah. it, it was um, nice for me. Okay, yeah, that sounds really awesome. Um, Salvatore, maybe we could ask you also, what's your favorite photograph that you've ever taken? Mm, probably the my favorite uh, photo I have taken uh, when uh, I went to Transylvania and uh, I photographed uh, uh, the castle in Sinaya uh, where, where you can find the castle uh, near the hill and uh, uh, a lot of tree and uh, uh, blue sky. It's very beautiful. 
Oh, yeah, that sounds amazing. Wow, I've never visited there, so that sounds like a great place to go. Okay, well, I wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for your participation um, and also for re relating your personal experiences about the different photography that you have done in the past also. It's really, really cool. So thank you all so much for coming to the class, and hopefully I'll get to see you soon in another class, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 See you soon. <laughs>